Derek Sugden's career in engineering spans over 50 years. He was a founder partner of both Arup Associates and Arup Acoustics, and his straightforward approach linked to his passion for music has made him a leader in his field since the mid-1960s. I came from that sort of background where you had to get out and do a job. Architecture was dead because of the war. I left school in 41, and I got an apprenticeship with a construction engineer. Where did you get this sort of tactile appreciation of putting things together? Was it from your family? My or? father was great with his hands, and he used to breed chickens, and he used to make his own chicken coops and chicken sheds. In fact, he used to publish the designs in Poultry World. And I always remember him <laughs> making these. And of course, he drew them first. He was a beautiful draftsman. You say you're not creative, but you do like drawing. Well, I served an apprenticeship mainly in the, draw in the drawing office of the construction engineers, and that's where I learnt to draw. After his apprenticeship, Derek Sugden worked as a resident engineer in the London docks and then, in 1953, joined Ove Arup and Partners to work on a number of mainly industrial buildings. What was it that attracted him to the firm? I'd had two jobs. They were good firms in a way, but I was thinking, seriously thinking, about giving up engineering because I was wanting to change my job. Um, I was looking round, I had had three or four interviews and they were all so depressing and Ronald Jenkins and Ulfa were was something totally different, in, totally in what, different. In, in, in well they way? talked about what they did, you know, rather than the sort of things that so-called managers talk about. They didn't talk about efficiency and profit and all those things. They talked with passion, Orva did, particularly about what they did. One of the good things about it, I felt, when I started work here in 53, was they left authority in a way lying around waiting for you to pick it up. Anybody, if they showed they had the ability and were willing to pick up the authority and use it, the opportunities were there. In 1963, Derek Sugden was a founding partner of the multidisciplinary architectural practice Arup Associates, working on projects which embraced Arup's philosophy of total architecture. Leghampton House, Truman Headquarters, Bush Lane House, IBM offices, and concert halls such as Henry Wood Hall, Buxton Opera House, and Snape. What really changed my life was doing Snape, of course. And what other senior partner, when he got a letter from them saying, They'd got this old malt house and they thought it could be turned into a concert hall. Could you come and look at it? And he was so busy on Sydney Opera House, he rang me up and he said, you better go and see them. After the survey, which showed there were a multiplicity of cross walls, and so we realised very soon after we started surveying, we had to take everything down but six walls. And we were fortunate that we were left with an ideal space for concerts, traditional shoes box space. The first thing you have to get is adequate volume. Right. And we raised the walls by some three feet, and you can see the change from the existing wall to the new wall. The volume is about 10 cubic metres per seat, which is an ideal figure for a two second reverberation time. We couldn't afford to spend too much money on sound insulation. Luckily, the site is very quiet. We couldn't afford to put weight in the roof we would have liked to, but we were very careful about designing the mechanical ventilation. And we brought the air in on the west wall through honeycomb brickwork into a slow-moving fan and a direct oil burner to air heater. And then it went through a sound attenuator and then we pushed the air very slowly in these slots you see in the walls. It's a passive exhaust system. We couldn't afford to locate extract fans. And uh, we slavishly copied the bluffs and they're a little more sophisticated though, and they have electrically operated veins inside which control the exhaust. 
and they go up through that opening inside too to give a bit of sound attenuation we have some hanging panels made of wood wool slabs which are highly absorbent and we get something of the order of NR 17 to 20 in here which is very very good. We adopted this roof form because it's simple straightforward fan roof truss which is broken in the centre and it, it went together remarkably quickly. In fact after the fire we rebuilt this hall in 42 weeks and the roof went on fantastically rapidly. I expect it was the one job where I got to know practically everybody who was working on the job, particularly Bill Muttit. Bill Muttit was one of those foremen who seemed to know everything about building. He was very inventive, he had a fantastic memory, and he didn't need any programs, and he knew where to place work if weather threatened and how to balance his men. I expect the most extraordinary man was Leonard. He was a carpenter who worked on his own on one Friday I heard the strains of the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto coming from the hall. We were approaching completion. And I said to Bill Muttip, what on earth's that? He said, oh, that's Leonard having his daily practice. So in I went, and Leonard was here on this stage, which we had just completed, playing his violin, which gave you a good idea of what it was going to sound like. I got to know him very well indeed. He was the sort of man who realised, quite rightly, that carpenters are just as important as violinists. In 1972, Derek Sugden pursued his interest in acoustic engineering by founding Arab Acoustics. Through this practice, he's worked on a number of acoustic design projects such as the Britain Opera Theatre, Wexford Opera House, Glyndebourne, the Jacqueline Dupre Memorial Hall and Emmanuel College. I'd had no formal training in acoustics. I had, though, been fascinated by the subject. And That's as a, as a concert goer? As a concert goer, yes, just as a concert goer. And I went to my first concert in 1940 at Watford Town Hall. In structural engineering, there's a degree of tolerance in terms of the margins that you design within. You might be 10 or 20 percent bigger and actually it doesn't make much difference to the end product. But do you think in acoustics and to some extent in architecture that those margins are much, are much finer? I think in acoustics the margins are smaller. The air is a fantastically sensitive instrument. We went in the other day to the Royal Academy to use our ears on a trial of some a new uh, reinforcement system they're putting in with small bowls of speakers. And the first thing I noticed, I said, wow, the background noise levels are awful. And one or two people said, oh, we didn't think you noticed that. And I said, I was just going to say, I bet they're about 40 dB, he said it was designed to the NR40 curve, the air conditioning. And so no matter what you do, the first thing you have to do is to get the background down. Now, I'm very, very aware of that. Two or three dB, you can tell. But you, but Even you... less the, in background noise levels. And I'm very, very aware of going in and clapping and, before you measure it accurately, being aware of what the re natural reverberant characteristics of a room are. I think the ear is very, for the listener and the musician, I think the um, tolerances are much smaller in the physics.